Hello and welcome to the November 2018 edition of the Skypire Podcast. Today I'm joined by Nick, Andrew, and David. Hello. Hello. Greetings. Um, so today's subject is game announcements, mobile games, and reaction culture is very relevant to what just occurred uh, today and a few days ago. Uh, a few days ago was BlizzCon, and uh, as expected with most of these big gaming conventions, a lot of announcements, a lot of updates are, are, are revealed to the public. Um, and sometimes those announcements don't go quite as well as the companies would like. Specifically about Blizzard with Diablo, what is it called? Diablo Immortal. Immortal. A mobile game. Mm-hmm. So from my understanding, from what I've been seeing on Twitter and the hype and stuff, from what I understood was that people were expecting this huge Diablo reveal, whatever it was, people assumed it would be Diablo 4, and people got all hyped up and it came out to be Diablo Immortal, which is actually a mobile game, not at all what, peop- what a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people were expecting, and uh, the backlash is a little bit more... Um, a little more uh, uh, aggressive than anticipated, I think, by Blizzard. I think the other thing, too, is it's it's such a contrast, right? Because Blizzard typically is a company that is in the positive public eye of in the gaming industry, right? Blizzard kind of, for lack of a better word, is like a golden pony boy. They kind of can't do any wrong it seems, with the exception of small tweaks they make to their own games. But it's it's interesting that they've come out with something, and I think the reason most it's it's garnered such attention is because people have actually gone, oh, no, Blizzard, you're wrong this time, and been mad about it, which is a little bit different for them. I mean, it's also the... um, It's also just the extent of the letdown. I think, like, if they... As far as I understand, they've been hyping it up for quite some time without actually saying anything. And so I think just the amount of of anticipation that they garnered over it versus the, you know, the the payout, I suppose, you know, it was it was just a lot bigger. Like I think if they had came out with it like in a less spectacular way, had hyped it up a little bit less, people would have been fine with it. Um but it's just the people's expectations were so high. And so when that dropped, it was uh, a lot more than they than they would, should have. Than yeah. they would have wanted. Here's, here's what I think. I think that regardless of of any kind of like, oh, what people were expecting or what people, you know, hoped for or how it seemed like they were implying or anything like that, I to me it seems unreasonable maybe i'm maybe i'm starting to view things more as a game developer than a player but it's just like you know the the people who are making this mobile game right it's like there's still a lot of work and art and stuff into putting that together right it's not like they're making some little shitty nothing yeah i think the other thing too or sorry go ahead yeah and it's like it's not like they're making this shitty little nothing game for nothing right like this is still a big project and there's still a lot of people working on it and still you know it's like yeah sure it's not the game you wanted but at least you know it's like look they're making a game here this this game we're making right and it's like the fact that people aren't like well it wasn't what i wanted but okay fine it's a game whatever i'll wait until the game i want to come out is then i'll be excited or whatever you know it's like people are actively mad and angry and it's like you know what people just like Get a hold of yourself a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I have I have two things to say about that. Uh, first, I, I agree with you. Um, I do think it's unwarranted the amount of backlash they're getting, um, not just from a developer standpoint. It's just 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 as a decent human being standpoint. Look, if you don't like something, that's fine. Um, but ultimately, you know, that's your opinion. Um, it's a big market, um, and I'm sure that people will buy it. Um, just not the people. Who maybe were their primary demographic to begin with, or which is fine. I mean, if they're if they're, if they're, right if they're, if they're oh, yeah, that that's actually my second point is that I think in most cases of you know <clears throat> quote unquote backlash culture and then just like that the you know the outrage culture is people always I think um, 
listen a bit too much to well i mean it's not that about listening to it's the the vocal minority is vocal um and so sure they're getting a lot of backlash and it's pretty hefty but at the same time like i watched a couple of the bit like a little bit of the videos of the q a and stuff and a couple of the people i think from from the context i think it was the second day it was the day after the announcement and a couple of people i think two people in a row like the first two questions in a row apologized on behalf of you know uh the people who had um given it you know such uh negative backlash just and said you know that's unacceptable like we're like we're sorry that you know that that kind of a behavior is unacceptable so there are clearly people out there that like while not super happy about it do understand that you know you're allowed to not like something just don't you know don't go on the on the offensive about it yeah i think yeah and then uh or sorry go ahead sorry yeah um i think i think that's part of the part of the issue is like what you were saying andrew is that the people you the reason why it seems like so much of a backlash is there's a, because there's just that many more people who are you know, making comment negative comments about it because for every game there always will be people who are pissed off or whatever. But I think this one just has just enough more that it's created more of a of a of a bump, so to speak. You know, and obviously the people who are happy with it, you never hear from them. So now that this backlash is just so much more, now everyone's heard of the backlash of this game. Now it's like the worst thing ever in, in PR history or whatever, but it's, you know, they may have just, uh, it's really just like you were saying, just those people who are in their minds getting this promise of the new game that they wanted, but it's, but at no point that the company or the PR team or anything ever even mentioned that. They just said, hey, we're doing this cool thing. And then people just yeah. overhyped yeah. it in their head expecting this thing. And if it's not this thing and only this thing, I will be pissed off forever. Yeah. yeah, another, you know, so, so just one more quick note is, it, is that, yeah, if this was the only thing they were working on for the Diablo fans that are expecting Diablo 4 or whatever, sure, uh, it's understandable. But uh, part of their response, um, they, they, did write an art, they did write an article and stuff responding. Um, and one of the things they said was that that's not the only Diablo project they have in the works. Uh, they said they have multiple teams working on multiple Diablo projects. So sure, this is the one, this might not be the one they want, but at the same time, it's not the end of the world because, you know, there's other games coming out. Yeah, and to, to back up a couple of points you've made using a, a similar scenario, um, I think it was E3 of this year when they announced uh, Command and Conquer Alli um, Alliances or something. It's like a mo basically a, sh a really shitty mobile version of, of Command and Conquer. And to me, that is an, an exact example of some of the things you're saying, which is A... Command and Conquer fans have been let down consistently by the choices made with that series for decades, almost, or a decade almost. So, you know, when they said, oh, yeah, we're making a crappy mobile version of your favorite strategy game, everyone went, OK, I saw this coming. This is fine. Um, and on, <laughs> you mean because and on the there's so much hand, let down? Because you're already been let down so much. <laughs> and, oh, and, okay. that, other, and because, you know, uh, EA while a publisher is the one in charge of giving that license to developers and giving them direction and funding. So not to pin all the blame on the publisher, but there's quite a bit of it. You know, they, they have been, they're not the most popular company um, in the industry. I think a, a slight majority would agree that that's the case. Uh, whereas Blizzard is much more of a prominent um, good guy company so you know for them to go oh we're making a crappy command and conquer mobile game everyone goes cool you know bastardize something more but in this case they're a little more concerned about it and i had a second point about that that i've now forgotten what, what else did you see Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I heard, what was the last thing you were saying mm, i don't remember here uh, i've got we just stuff, got off sorry. extra life so we're all exhausted I um recovered it's it's just like you're saying oh it's the it's the vocal minority that's you know that's being like this but am i wrong in in remembering that like when they announced it like people booed like, no you are well, so, correct so, so, so i actually watched the video on that and it wasn't as bad as people sorry there was a time when people were booing it honestly the the time that i saw it the most was when someone was asking whether or not it would eventually like also be on like pc and that when that answer was no 
Um, that was when the booing was loudest. So when it, when they actually like announced it was going to be mobile, I think I heard a little bit of like grumble. It was a negative audience. rumble. It was a negative rumble when he when it, like that on first announcement. And plus, you know, and just to kind of get the opposite reaction, like there was, you know, uh, in certain cases there was some applauding. And like when, uh, you know, when as I was mentioning before, when that when those people apologized, you know, asking questions like you know, sorry, you know, that was unacceptable. You had some people in the like a fair amount of people in the audience like you know clapping and mm-hmm. agreement. So, you know, ultimately there are people that, there might be people that are happy about this. I, I imagine not a whole lot of people. And I think the rest of people just are like, great, there's plenty of other games to play. <laughs> like, yeah, And see, I think the other thing too is go ahead, Nick. at, uh, thank you, at BlizzCon, right? Who, who are the people who are going to be in an audience at BlizzCon? Probably many of Blizzard's biggest fans. Whereas the majority of their players, I'd venture an unbacked up statistic of, like 80 percent of the people who play their games don't like blizzard as a company enough to go to blizzcon you know like myself included like i wouldn't go to blizzcon so i'm not gonna i'm i'm to be fair i'm not a huge fan of the diablo series but if i can put myself in those shoes you know i'm like you know i take it the same way i take um fallout 76 when they announced that so that got better reception but still there was a bunch of people who were like that that's not just another single player fallout game so i was disappointed i was like oh this this sucks but you know what there are people out there like you said before andrew there are people that there's this isn't a market for and people will buy it good for them i'll wait for mine to come you know and i think that that is the majority of people in almost every scenario yeah no that's fair um i think it's i think it was interesting how see david brought up the point like am i right in saying that when it was announced everyone booed and yes and no it's actually it actually more booing like andrew said when it was answered that no it was not going to pc so it's interesting like you you through the grapevine and through media and stuff it all gets this 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 amazing amount of backlash it actually isn't as much as you thought it's just oh it's just more than what blizzard is used to so you know but compared to maybe other games, it's barely anything. Um, so it seems very relative to the project and the company. Um, because based, based on Twitter and, and articles and stuff, it sounds like it was like this huge failure of a thing. But it really wasn't. It was just a little bit more backlash than Blizzard is used to. And, they, and people took that as, oh my god, it's the end of the world. And, and everyone's booing it all the time. But it's really not that at all. Um, you know, if you just look into it, it's like, oh, well, actually, it's just a few extra people who, who, who may have been caught off guard. So it's interesting how the media can really warp what you think actually happened. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think we've sort of covered, like, this side of it. I, I'm actually curious just to hear you guys' thoughts on um, just the mobile market in general, because um, it is definitely... Um, a certain negative perspective on the mobile gaming market yeah. as far as um you know console and pc gamers are concerned uh despite the fact that the mobile market is actually the biggest gaming market by quite a large margin as as far as numbers go mm, true. so um okay. yeah so I, i'm curious to hear you guys thoughts on that yeah so actually i was just i was just thinking about this the other day that for so long right video games as an entire idea have it's taken video games so long to be considered like any kind of legitimate medium in popular culture and like you know just sort of in general you know culture you know even now you could say well maybe not quite but like you know at least nowadays video games are considered more mainstream more like oh that's a thing that people do right before it's just like ah some nerds who cares right so it's taken a while for that but even Video gamers, even gamers with a Z, you know, TM, <laughs> you know, they in, 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 and of them, gamers. In, in and of themselves look down upon mobile gamers as like, oh, they're not gamers enough. It's like a subclass. Right. It's like a yeah, class exactly. system it's like, almost. It's like, yeah, like, you know, they get looked at, like gamers as a whole get looked down upon. And then it's just like, they look down upon mobile gamers. Oh, they're not enough. And here's the thing is that, like, yeah, like you said, like, most 
tons of people who like don't consider themselves gamers play mobile games you know right mm -hmm. yep and true. and i think that the mobile game market in a general sense is you know as phones get better the kind of games that you can play on phones get more complicated more involved right right you know people are playing you know like knights of the old republic like that computer game runs fine on a phone you know well perfect example is diablo <laughs> now it runs yeah. on a phone like these huge well, games yeah 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 well, i mean it's just my it's my understanding that this diablo game is like kind of like simplified to some extent i don't know i haven't looked into it i wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't honestly but yeah like it's actually it's it's to answer your question david it's it's not that dumbed down from what i've read again i'm not a diablo player <laughs> But the opinions I've been hearing is is it looks like Diablo, it sounds like Diablo, it plays like Diablo, but it's missing something that I think people are like. It it's maybe it is missing something. Maybe it's missing a bit of the you know in your words like that little panache, like that little thing that gives it its Diablo ness. But it also might be a lot of that reaction culture being like it's missing the secret sauce. And the secret so. sauce is being able to play it on a big screen. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, like, yeah, so I guess, I guess, which is so weird, um, but, like, I think that gamers still have this perception of mobile games as, like, just, like, ah, who gives a shit? That's, like, garbage. You oh, know for what I sure, mean? for sure. Like, oh, it's, beju you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you had the flip phones and you're playing, like, Bejeweled on it, you know? Well, well you we've see, all been there. I think, I think the reason why that is such a prominent thing is because... Um, because there's just so many games on 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 uh, on phones, and literally anyone can play, and just everyone is playing. I think that's part of the reason. It's like you know, uh, uh, you know, everyone's playing Bejeweled or whatever. But it's, there's about a million copies of that same game that everyone has, but like at varying degrees of of quality. Whereas there's only I don't know. Uh, there's only like like you know Bethesda games, for example, like Skyrim or something, has only ever been on consoles. So, you know, and only only people who play these games know about these games. Whereas on on mobile, it's everyone has a mobile, so it seems like it's it's almost too mainstream. I don't know. It's it, it's almost like I'm a I'm a 360 player, so I you know I get all of this all these games and only gamers who play 360 will understand me but now literally everyone has a phone so maybe some people feel like they don't want to connect with other people through the, i don't know it, it seems like it seems something like that like the, the the old people are playing the same game as me they're i can't connect with them i don't want to be related to them in any way not cool you know so i think it's something like that it's some so, weird uh, nick i don't I know yeah, yeah. He gave something like that. So just regarding um, regarding mobile mobile games, and I guess their sort of place. It's like I feel like there's there's a bunch of of things in the pot that lead to the reaction that mobile gaming gets as a subcategory of 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 games playing, right? Because it's um. Mo mobile games were the hotbed of microtransactions mm -hmm. when that was introduced to the industry. Mm. So they got flagged with that virus before it spread to the rest of them, right? So nowadays, mobile games are just as bad, or, or r rather, mainstream console or PC games are just as bad as mobile games for that. So that's uh, I wouldn't say that. There, there, there's I'd a debate say, to be I'd had there. So, a reputable title. It's mobile games are are. Well, it's true that that has popped up in um, in like a AAA game, the like you know the AAA console and PC game industry. But for the but for that same reason, it's for that same reason that people are moving away from AAA games as well, and why publishers that practice those. Um, practice those practices uh are being more and more boycotted and ignored because of those but i mean it's 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 already pervaded the mobile game industry to the point where even if you do have a fun um non-predatory game on the mobile market it's 
just the market as a whole has been sort of condemned as a microtransaction ridden um, platform. And that's primarily because primarily because of the user base. Like there's a lot of users that, and because of the nature of mobile for the convenience, people are willing to pay um, for convenience. And that's, that's just the market. Yeah. And I think the other thing that's in that, uh, in that, that turning pot that has led to a negative reaction to it is also, and this may be somewhat of a controversial statement, but it's, it's the culture surrounding, um, uh, accessibility, right? Uh, and a lot of people, so taking a step back from mobile games, when you look at mainstream console or PC games, when they have a degree of accessibility, they're usually deemed, you know, less pro, less difficult, not as challenging, weaker games, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then from a developer developer standpoint, the p- opinion on the developer is that they're, oh, you're just trying to appeal to everybody, da, 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 which is fine. That's a criticism, I'm sure. But the other thing, too, is that for mobile developers, right, that's that's their bread and butter. The people who are playing mobile games are, like you said, Andrew, they're playing out of convenience because they have a phone already, right? So by making something that's easily accessible, I can grab it on the App Store, download it, it's tiny, doesn't take a lot of my data to download it, you know, and I can play it doing whatever, sitting on the bus, in a waiting room, in the washroom, whatever. It's that that rapid accessibility and convenience means that more people have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Not many people are bringing an Xbox into the toilet. The Switch changes that, but that's a different point. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think another reason why uh, mobile games uh, have sort of their, their, their rep with um, uh, PC and console gamers is because of just the, the nature of a game being designed for mobile sort of implies a certain um, shallowness to it, I think. Um, there are very few games... Generally speaking, if a game is designed for mobile, it's designed for uh, a mobile battery, let's say, and a mobile screen. So there's not a whole lot of depth to any of the interface or mechanics. Um, uh, in terms of like graphical styles, it's going to be fairly like you know dumbed down in order to preserve battery. Um, and just because of just the nature of battery life in general, those games aren't going to be designed for more than like you know an hour, maybe two, of playtime per session kind of thing. Whereas most gamers, including myself for PC and console, are used to sitting down for two, three, four hours or longer, like digging into a game and really getting into it. Um, so just, I think just the the idea of a of a game like Diablo that you know people would probably sit down for like a full day, or maybe in a few days after it releases, just to like blast through and just have you know uh a game like that being released on mobile which in and of itself isn't designed for that sort of um play sessions and that's fine you know people can sit down for a couple hours and play on a computer and do the same thing but the, i think the issue is that this game is probably going to be designed in a in a way that makes that not as worth it mm-hmm. if you know what i'm Make, saying makes the general game loop less satisfying Maybe, right. maybe not less satisfying necessarily, but just less in depth, yeah. uh, more simple. I think that's a, a well taken point. In basically, yeah, what you're saying is that Diablo, like you know, capital D Diablo, is a game that is a game series that is like basically kind of about that kind of like, you know, that like big play session, really in depth thinking about you know all the numbers and the plans and the like. Really, like you get really into stuff in Diablo, at least as far as I understand it. And yeah, exactly. It's like you're right. It's like almost like people like maybe might feel betrayed. Like you were my, you were supposed to, you know, just you know, you were supposed to be like the icon of the PC game Diablo. You know, how could you betray us like this kind of thing? You know what I mean? You think mm-hmm. there's some some aspect of that in it? Yeah, I for think sure. so too. Yeah, I think so. It's it's almost like it's it's. It's almost like people see it as as bringing it down or like you know diluting it. Yeah, like like it like the pin like it's at the top, it's at the peak and now you've just 
you've torn it down from its pedestal and it's on the ground now and it's, it's on mobile. What are you doing down there? That sort of thing, I think, is what people yeah. are freaking out about. To um, some degree. Which, um, which yeah. for some games, that is quite possible, quite possibly the case. And maybe that's just, maybe people are just fearful that that'll, that's what's going to happen to Diablo. So hopefully Blizzard didn't do that and, and you know, will surprise people with what comes out. Another yeah. thing too that I'm I'm just having a conversation in the chat here with um, uh, Jasmine, who is a, a Blizzard fan and who I believe plays a amount of Diablo, um, is saying that it looks like there's a lot less uh, on there's a lot less of a cooperative point of view, both local and mm. um, online. Uh, and and to my understanding, the limited amount of the game I've played in in uh, high school, played Diablo three with some friends. Um, the co op, the same screen co op thing, was kind of the Diablo's shtick. At Ooh, least so it was like... to me. So so correct me if I'm wrong. Anyone who plays it more, but if they're moving to a more single player thing, that's only putting salt on the wound for what people might. Well, how people. Might I, this is more about I, no, 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 Halo no. Five ex situation. I, I I really don't think that's the issue here, um, because if you watch the video, the way he pitched it was quite the was like the, like the the way the thing he hinged his the, the pitch on when he announced it was the connectivity of mobile devices. That is um, that is and what just he the started. The power with. they give. So I I think that was what they're hoping people realize. Like you know, this could be like a, a new era for co-op games, um, where you know everyone has a phone, everyone has you know that the same platform. You don't have to worry about oh you know your friend, one person has an Xbox, one person has a PC, and you know you can't play together. And you know same screen's hard to do. You know people can't always you know be in the same place. Um, so I, I think the idea behind it was that it would make a co-op co experience more accessible. Um, so I don't think that's the issue. I don't think co-op is there. It's not a Halo 5 thing. I, I think okay. it's quite the opposite. Yeah, because if I, if I recall from the, I think it was either the trailer or some small gameplay footage, they had a whole thing saying, now go join your your party. And like his guy shows up and there's like four other players, player characters lined up with him. So I'm pretty sure yeah. that the whole online experience no. is there. Like... No, no, but I here's mean, the thing, though, is that is that Halo 5's... The thing is that it didn't have local multiplayer. Halo 5 right. has plenty of online Right, but th this is also on a phone. That's true. Yeah, I mean... So, I mean um, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, local multiplayer is, yeah, it's still doable. It's not on the same screen, but you can easily just, you know, be, like, beside your friend and playing the same, like, you know, playing the same instance of the game. Um, it's not, You're right, the experience is a bit different, but ultimately it's the same thing. Roughly, sure. Um, kind of like and a yeah, no, it, party. It, it absolutely is. It absolutely is like a thing. Cause it, so I was saying, like, oh, like, I think it's this. No, like, it, it definitely is. Like, the way he pitched it, like, I think that he's open with, like, you know, I love, you know, the way what we love about Diablo is how it brings us together. You know, killing demons. And everyone's like, yeah. Um, and like, and he's like, before he even pitched it, he's like, and, you know, we're, we live in an age like, you know, we're all, all on mobile devices, kind of keep us together, bring us together, and this and that. And so. He was really leaning heavily on on the that's mobile true. devices bring us together. So I think that's like the well, whole point of the game. And you know, I can I can see the marketing meeting where they're like, you know, how can we, you know, how, well, I mean, or not marketing, but uh, just like the design meeting, of like you know, how can we make copies or how can we bring people together? Now, the other side of that is I do think the bottom line was a big factor. I think that's another reason why mobile games kind of get a. A bit of a shove to the side is because due to all the factors you mentioned previously the fact that they need to be a quick game loop the fact that they're running on limited hardware etc cetera, etc cetera, and they're also targeting an accessible audience and all of this it leads them to be relatively simple in design and in that case cheaper to make yep and made much faster and if you <laughs> If you ever look at video, the videos of the wine snobs, where someone hands them the same bottle of wine, one with a, a more fancy label on it, but it's the same wine, they'll yeah. always be like, oh, yes, this is tastier, it's got a thicker body, and mm, yes, I love Scotland, or whatever. <laughs> Or yes, it'll Scotland. Be perfect impression. Scotland, known for Scotland wine. Scotland wine, that's right. No, but the point is, is, is like you, know, you can if you hand somebody... Scotland vine, really. 
<laughs> yeah, if you hand somebody two Diablos that are the exact same, but one's on a phone and took six months to make, and one's on a console and took three years, they'll say that the one on the console is better, even if they were the same, exact same game. You know? Yeah, probably. It, it's like, uh, I feel like that hackers. would be the case. Let me, one one more go at the joke. Uh, Scotland Vineyard. There we go. There you go. Scotland Vineyard. There we go. <laughs> See, there, yeah, we, we found yeah. It. I think we found ultimately it. mobile games are are seen, and this kind of goes back to the microtransaction topic. My, mo- mobile games are seen as a cash grab, uh, just in general. There are definitely games out there that have a certain amount of, let's call it artistic integrity. Um, you know, Monument to make a Valley. game. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really play yeah, mobile games, so I can't. Valley I, I can't really. Game. I can't really think of any. Uh, Personally, I can't think of any examples. Obviously, my colleagues here are throwing out examples, but um, but yeah. So I, I think just just kind of placing a, a tr- like you know a, a good title among sort of those that on that level, it it just comes across as a cash grab. I and mean, ultimately, you know, they do have to worry about their bottom line and such. And you know, ultimately, everything comes down to money. It really shouldn't. I, speaking as a game studio, I think we all agree that. Um, games are an art form, and I think there does need to be a certain amount of integrity mm-hmm. in what you make. And, and that's not to say, and like, like you said, there are there are some mobile games out there that um, that have that integrity that of people that making a game that they think people want to play, and not just for the bottom line. But you can see how people would have that reaction for a game like this um, going to that platform when it when really it has you know a large enough fan base on PC and console already. You know? mm-hmm. um, I think I think it's interesting how we're seeing you know this big franchise of Diablo putting on being put onto mobile, and everyone freak or a lot of people freak out, and it's not a good time. But then you look at uh, when you know Fallout's a thing, and then right before Fallout Four, Fallout Shelter comes out, and people some I think some people freaked out, but most most people were actually very excited and, and loved the game and they got millions of downloads within the first few hours, right? I think that's a completely different situation. Well, see, that's the thing, though. It's the same franchise, but it's interpreted on the phone completely differently. Yeah. I think but people other... were totally fine with it. So it, it, it really seems to depend on how the company decides to interpret that their franchise on what platform. But I think one of the main uh, the the main distinctions, the one that I'm I think David is thinking of, is that when they announced Fallout Shelter, they were also releasing no, Fallout. No, no, actually, that's that's to me that's the obvious thing you could say. But to me, it's not actually the most relevant detail. To me, the relevant detail is that uh, when when you say a game like oh it's like Fallout Shelter or oh, it's this game about managing your Fallout people or whatever, people are not saying oh this is them saying that this is the you know people are not seeing this as. Uh, Bethesda's like new Fallout game. They're like, oh, this is a side little thing. Whereas Diablo Immortal is presenting itself as like this is the Diablo game. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like it's not like like Fallout relevant. Shelter is not a Fallout game, quote unquote. You know what I mean? It's not a it's not a a mobile Fallout game. It's a it's a mobile game in the Fallout universe. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, no, I know. But what you I mean. think yeah. in in the context of game announcements. And the way it was structured, I think that 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 the fact that it was coming out alongside the title everyone wanted, like if they'd said, "Oh yeah, here's Diablo Immortal and also Diablo 4, everyone would be like, "Yes, this is fantastic. I can play Diablo on my phone and on the console." Mm-hmm. But they just they just didn't, you know. Yeah, that. I, I, it's like I was saying earlier. Ultimately, I think all of the backlash could have been curbed if they had simply not. Uh, put as much emphasis on it as its own thing. Um, mobile games. I mean, the, the reason, one of the things about mobile games is that they're considered to be very casual, and casual games don't warrant that level of hype. Here's what yes. I. Here's what I'm. This is this is actually something I'd like to talk about a little bit. Is that casual? Is that mobile games? Yes, they do have this connotation of being casual and lack of depth and whatever. But I think that we're we could be, if people will let it, if people will, will allow it to happen, we could be entering an era where mobile games do ha- like are allowed to have all like any the same amount of depth as any other as any other video game. Because, you know, here's the thing. 
mainstream video game companies are entering the mobile market. There's there's mobile Nintendo games, for example. Right? Mm -hmm. Mobile Nintendo Bethesda games, they just announced that uh, uh, Elder Scrolls one. Yeah, Blades. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think that, I think that, yes, you could say, oh, man, it's it's bad that they're saying this casual game was is giving, you know, they're giving it so much time. But what if it isn't a casual game? You know what I mean? People just assume, oh, it's on the mo it's on the mobile. It must be casual and therefore shit. Therefore, fuck, you know, fuck Blizzard. But what if they're like, no, no, this is a legit game. It's just on mobile so you can play it more often, you know? Fuck us, right? <laughs> so I think I think that brings up a good point, David, is that up till now, uh, mo the mobile market has been this oversaturated pile of, of microtransactions and cheaply made games to make money. But as you said, this could be an era where things change and that whole ploy to just quickly make money off of these really cheap things could completely change and, and, and these big, actually well-made games could actually come out. Um, and I think, I think that's what it is. I think part of it is that people are so used to the mobile market being this that, they're, that they don't realize what could be. And maybe I that's what these companies are trying to do. I frankly think that it's already happened. Like, I think that there's mobile games out there that, I mean, I can't necessarily, like, you know, mobile, like Monument Valley is a game that I've heard of, but I bet that there's other mobile games out there that are like, Absolutely. that are like, really that are doing their own thing. Because here's the thing with mobile games is that something that, you know, we need to realize is that phones nowadays have so much more computing power and visual fidelity than you know most consoles used to have you know what i mean yeah true like yeah well most like pcs of, like, too like like phones are not lacking in computational power like games that are considered legitimate have have done have done more with have done not more have done it enough with less so i i, I frankly think that people are just it's really just a matter of marketing yeah, I, I, I really agree with what you're saying, actually. And like to to give some perspective, like us as a studio, I think we've mostly agreed not to develop on mobile, precisely for the reasons that we've been giving. Not necessarily because, um, you know, we we can't we couldn't possibly make a good mobile game, and there's no like there's no way to leverage technology. I, I'm I'm convinced we could probably do it, uh, among other reasons. You know, we just the types of games we want to make don't necessarily cater to that market, but. I mean, I think a big reason why people don't develop for mobile is because of the reputation it has. Um, and I, completely, bit, I agree completely. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I do at least somewhat respect Blizzard for giving this a shot. And I agree with David that, like, I think the reason why it's gotten to this point with mobile is because people let it. People have stopped developing from, like, serious games for mobile because of just the, the, the rap that it got. Um, and so having a triple A company like Blizzard uh, put a put a you know a triple A game out on mobile and make such a big deal out of it, it, it could crash and burn. But if it does well, I mean, I think that actually really bodes well for the market because uh, if if it does well, people could actually see it, um, start seeing it as you know a, a viable platform for 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 gamers. Right. Um, it, in, in more in more so than just like a bottom line sense, I suppose. It could actually change just, the, the reputation of the market. Exactly. It, it, it won't be so much of a, of a taboo for a game company to put something out on mobile. Um, and, I and, think, and that's great. And I think the same the same thing is, is kind of is happening with the, the, the AAA industry and the influx of microtransactions and very... Um, limiting game loops of 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 low interest and so on and so forth is is again it's that same thing right as a as a consumer base that is buying these things we're allowing it to happen by buying them you know how many people can you think of that would you know when the the latest entry in a series people generally dislike pick your own comes out people are like oh that they just they've made this in a year you know, this isn't very good. It's going to be the same shit. Oh, it's terrible. Then they buy it. <laughs> it's like you're, <laughs> yeah. you're not you're not exactly helping your case, uh, you know, by by Ta giving them part. exactly what they're doing, which and that's the thing at the end of the day. And I think this is something that is is harder to get across 
than sort of the sim the sympathy of the developers or or what it could mean for the future is at the end of the day the game as much as it's a piece of art like any other piece of art is a product that needs to sell that needs to make money and i think that that's a difficult thing to explain to a large majority or rather hard to explain to the favid vocal minority that believes that the thing that they're interested in is is much more important than money hmm. i mean here's the thing though is that to me that argument i mean it, in a general sense i think that's a good argument for a lot of stuff but with with a game like a big a big budget a big profile game like diablo like do you honestly think that if they have if they or well, i'm sure they are working on it whatever the next diablo game do you think that that game despite however more expensive or more time it would take than a mobile game. Do you think that that game's not going to make money? Oh, it's going to make money. It's going to be very successful, I imagine. I yeah, think it's more it, about I, diversifying I, where it's coming from because they can make, you know, AAA Diablo games in the traditional vein as they have, you know, for the next 20 years and they will keep making them lots of money and profitable, profitable but of the market available, it's only a portion, the people who have access to that. Yeah, I mean, you... introducing it to mobile, they now reach, you know, millions and millions and millions of people and possibly get them interested and possibly, and the positive side of this is possibly get them interested in more Diablo so that they'll buy it on a computer and then they're part of the masses. Yeah, I think the flip side of that is that, you know, it comes across again as, as, a, as a cash grab. Like, it really is a matter of perspective. Well, one person could see it as, you know, they're trying to reach more people to play games. And that's great. But obviously, and someone in in Blizzard has to think about this. It also comes down to numbers, right, and money, um, and you know that can alienate some people. Uh, I think another thing to consider is that people are being really kind of melodramatic about it. I think, yeah, in more ways than one. Like, you get people saying, you know, oh, I'm no longer a fan of Blizzard because of this, or I'm no longer a fan of the Diablo franchise. It's like, did the first three games suddenly become bad because they released a fourth game that wasn't good? I mean that's that's not just like gaming. That's just fandoms did, yeah. in general. Did the did the um, first bunch of thing of X become bad because they released the next thing of X that you didn't yeah. like? Oh, and so everyone's like, oh, every, everyone's like, oh man, the Diablo franchise is dead. It's like, no, they're gonna make they're gonna release like Diablo four eventually on PC, and it's gonna be great, and you're gonna buy it, and you know, the world's gonna keep on. And they'll likely buy the mobile one too. They'll, yeah, cause they're absolutely. Gonna, they're gonna go, I'm never going to play Diablo on my phone. And then they're like, oh, wait, I need to take a train two hours to another city. Maybe I'll download that Diablo game. And all of a yeah, sudden, it's like, I like Diablo. Games. Maybe I'll be able to play it. I'll, I'll play it on my phone. Therefore, you know, it's like it's like the pizza bagel commercial. You know, when you put when you put uh, pizza on a bagel, you can eat it any, you know, you can eat it anytime. You know what I mean? If you put <laughs> Diablo on a mobile on a mobile platform, you can have Diablo anytime. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, what would be interesting to me, and and I don't know, let's let's call this a, a futurist side tangent. What would be interesting to me is that the more and more all of these devices are becoming connected and using cloud uh, cloud data to to run and power them in the form of storage. And uh, a, lo a couple games I know have dabbled with cloud graphics computing. Um, and, and physics calculation, Crackdown 3 is the one that comes to mind. You can topple the whole building and it's calculated on the Microsoft Cloud or something, or the Xbox Cloud. So what to me would be an interesting sort of uh, world would be one where you're playing a game on your phone, but it's using your computing power at home. It's the same game, you know, and you come home and, oh, you want to play your, your computer game on your TV in your living room, right? You don't want to sit at your desk. You just plug your phone into your TV or, or actually in this futuristic world, let's just say you sit it next to it and it sends the video from your transfers from your phone to your TV. And all of a sudden, you know, you're playing Diablo 27 on your your TV or your phone or your console of choice, because at the, this point, they're all so connected. It doesn't matter. That could be interesting. I, I have some news for you. Something a uh, not not what you're not like in the way you're saying it but something to that gives the same effect as what you're saying it already kind of exists yeah the switch the switch yes but what if i told you there was something like the switch but it was a pc fortnite <laughs> <laughs> excuse me <laughs> uh nothing i was just it's on everything uh, what what is it yeah 
uh, our friend Josh uh, owns a little device, which is essentially, essentially, it's a switch-sized PC computer that he can play, you know, legitimate PC video games on, like anywhere. The Shield. I don't. I don't know. It's 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 got some. It's some Chinese. Oh, uh, I thought you had a name. I thought you were gonna name drop. No, I don't remember what it's called. What it's called actually. Do you, yeah. do you know Andrew? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, but the point is, is that that to me is kind of the inevitable direction a lot of this stuff is heading. Like, I am seeing the exclusivity of consoles dwindle. Right in the last couple of years, uh, do you guys agree? Well, yeah. Well, especially yeah. now when they're they're announcing more and more of these crossplay games and stuff. That's that's bridging the gap between all these platforms. Yeah, yeah. Exclusivity is becoming increasingly archaic. And to yeah. me, with it was annoying, of... but ne- but seemingly a way of life, and it's becoming less a way of life. Thank God. And to me, the the hardware restrictions of mobile devices are mobile in the general sense you know because the 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 switch is a great example of of you know like you were saying like this the switch the switch can run doom you know 2016 doom which is a phenomenal looking game yeah sure it doesn't look quite as good but if you suddenly added the ability to power some of that via the cloud all of a sudden you know it can look just as good yeah and absolutely. I think yeah. That mobile devices are heading in that direction eventually you know so I, I don't know what that world will look like, but I think that, that this is sort of the direction we're heading. And at a certain, yeah. yeah at, at a certain point, I feel, like, I feel like technology will just get to the point where we can no longer, like, we can no longer exceed its capacity, at least in terms of game. I mean, that, you know, I don't know when that's going to be. That could be quite a while down the road, but at some point it'll happen. At some point, computers will just get so good that, like, we couldn't possibly, like, use all of its power or like, you know, exceed its power by making, you know, in whatever we decide to do in gaming. I think, I think games and game and gaming potential or games and like processing potential in terms of complexity have kind of both gone up. So kind of, they seem to kind of both go up like the same, like games. It seems like mainstream games are always pushing the envelope. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Like, yeah, and I think technology and I think technology and games, um, hardware, hardware and games are constantly pushing each other to get better and better, just to keep each other on the same level, um, which is why it's so rap- always rapidly increasing. Um, yeah. yeah, and and I guess since we're getting uh, we're getting close to our, our hour here, one one comment from the. Um the chat from Michael actually uh, makes a good point and I think puts a good pin in it and it agrees with David is that uh, he talked about, he's saying here, uh, I'll really enjoy, I really enjoyed Diablo three and I'll definitely try the mobile version and same with the mobile elder elder scrolls, but I won't touch either of them with a 10 foot pole if they have microtransactions because he's not supporting that model and it's killing our industry. Mm. And to me, I'm interpreting that is, is exactly what you were saying, David, is that it's, it's no longer, hardware it's not that you hate the phone it's that you hate the way that mobile games had in the past have been designed that we've allowed them to be designed like that yeah, yeah and now we design decisions and industry trajectory that's going to determine yeah. how positive the next decade of game development and, and game platforms is yeah and ultimately that and that's a really good attitude to have in, and just in gaming in general or just in just in like consumerism in general is you know you know, don't label an entire company uh, as you know as as poor, or don't label an entire platform as poor, or pro- like, you know, give things, judge things based on the, the merit that they have. Like people jump to conclusions so much about different Definitely. games and different publishers, and like to the to the point where like they can't recover because people are no longer willing to give them a chance. Um, and it's the same thing with, uh, I mean, like I would I would use EA as an example. Like, sure, they've had a lot of really poor business decisions in the past but like you know if they if they come out with something that that people enjoy or that that's that's good reward them for it you know if diablo ends up being if the like diablo immortal ends up being good like a good game not you know not predatory um support it uh and if it is 
microtransaction ridden and just a, clearly a cash grab, don't support it. Um, but, at, 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 but, at this, but, at, but at this point, it's too early to tell. So I'm just saying I, I think the, a good way to approach any of this stuff is um, just with tempered expectations. Um, your your ex- expectations can be as low, as low or high as you want, but, you know, avoid, you know, passing judgment on the game and the developers and the publisher until, you know, until it's finally out. Mm-hmm. Very good point. Um, I think that'll do it for today. Yeah. See, see you guys, audience, uh, in a month. In a month. Catch you on the flip side. Thanks first Monday of December. That's right. Yeah. All right. See you later. See you later. Bye.